S-C-A-L You are now rocking with that dude Pascal We be going wild Haitian in the building So, so, so original Got the haters Got your feelings Get your hands up to the ceiling And keep them held high Cause some new whistles are ready Forget about it Goodbye Hold on, we just saying hi Five somebody rise up Weekdays Catch us live Somebody let's go Good evening Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Pascal Show. Hope you guys are all doing well out there. Hope this show finds you in great spirits. We need your good spirits right now. We need your focus. We need your love. We need your heart. We need everything right now, okay? Everything that's positive within your body, we need it for tonight's late show. We apologize for being late, okay? But uh, you know, some things happen and uh we can't we couldn't be on at the time that we were planning on being on. It just is what it is. Those are the breaks, okay? These are the breaks. It just is how it is, guys, okay? But we are going to be having a very exclusive interview with our good friend Seth Rogers. The biological father of Sebastian Rogers here in just a minute. So please do me a favor. We've got to get some of this housekeeping stuff out the way. Okay. I appreciate all y'all for being here on this Friday night. Because I know there's plenty of other things you could be doing with your time on a Friday night. And you're spending it here with us and getting some much needed information. And that is what matters the most right now so do me a favor hit that like button down below all right send those like likes way past 400 likes as you guys start to tune in start to file in the water's just fine just jump on in okay and get this information all right we're gonna bring a lot of things to light in this conversation we're gonna bring some things bring awareness to a lot of things as well just as a quick reminder and uh, heads up. So hit that like button down below. It helps get this story out there, gets this show and this interview, this conversation out there as well. Don't forget to hit that follow button on my Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter, all the other stuff, okay? Of course, do not forget to crush that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. That would be really appreciated, okay? Hit that join button down below. Become a member. Check out my Patreon. And, of course, check out PascalMerch.com. We got some really great merchandise over there. That would be greatly greatly appreciated okay but most importantly i need your ears i need your green heart emojis for sebastian and we got to get into this conversation guys we got to get straight into it okay so as you guys already know sebastian february 26 was reported missing he has been missing for over a month now guys over a whole month and we still do not know where this young boy or some would say I like to call him young man is we are still looking for this young man as we speak. I just want to make that abundantly clear. We don't know where he is. There have been multiple interviews everywhere. Okay. Multiple podcasts, most multiple inter interviews by the proud foots. I know Seth, Seth has recently been making his rounds more frequently on these interviews as well. And shout out to all you content creators that have been able to sit down and have a conversation with him as well. But still, I still got questions. I got a lot of questions and I want to know what's going on. So I am very humbled to bring our friend. He's called on to the show before. I've been talking to him for a while now. And I'm honored to even call him my friend. Please welcome Seth Rogers to the show. Seth, how you doing, my brother? I'm alive. Boots on the ground still. No doubt. No doubt. First off, I want to I want to do this for you really quick. You doing that thing out there, bro. You doing that thing. I just want you to know that. So I appreciate you and I appreciate all that you have been doing because uh somebody's got to do it. And I don't really see any other anybody else spearing my this situation. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I am my son's voice. No doubt. No doubt. How have, how has things been recently? It's been like a John Grisham novel, to be honest. Mm. Thank you. Yes, I'm live. 
I'm not putting you on the camera. Nobody wants to see you in your pajamas. <laughs> I'm, sure there's some, I'm sure there's some people that do. But when you say Ex- John Gresham. I don't want to see you in your pajamas. <laughs> Hold on. Time out. Time out. <laughs> You're being silly now. But when you say it's like a John Grisham novel, what do you mean by that exactly? Just the amount of weird shit. I mean, can I cuss on here? Yeah, you're good, bro. It's a late night show. It's a Friday. We good. All right. It's just some weird, weird stuff has been going on as of late. That it's just weird. Um, my volunteers have been having people follow them while they handed out flyers and stuff like that. So, so people are getting followed. You said. Yep. Do you mind a? Uh... Do you mind expanding on that a little bit? Uh, I just tell my, well, my my volunteers that get together to help pass out flyers for Sebastian, they notice that vehicles be following them. And I told them if they see anybody following them, get their license plate number. And I pass it off to TBI. That's what's up. Wow. So people are getting followed, allegedly. People are getting followed who are just passing out flyers, volunteers that are just contributing in trying to find your son. That's very odd. Have you seen anything like that yourself? Have you been followed? Can't intimidate me. I have a goal in mind. Gotcha. Have you already reported that? Because that basically says yes to me. So have you reported that at all to TBI or any law enforcement at all that you you have been followed? Yeah. yeah. Has it changed as of late or are you still getting followed? I haven't been followed today. When but, did you re- Go ahead. Uh, today, if they wanted to know where I've been, I mean, they can ask me. Whoever wants to follow me, I was at church three times a day. It's Good Friday. Time to go to Mass. Right on. When did you report did you that? Go, mass? go ahead. What were you saying? Did you go to Mass? Not yet. <laughs> I'm a bad boy. I'm, I'm burning in the fiery pits of hell. I know. I know. I'll get down and help make sure that you don't stay there long. I appreciate that, my brother. I appreciate that. But when was the... When I, did you... Go ahead. Say that again. It's always time to change. Right. Always, always, always time. But when did you report to TBI that you were actually getting followed? Was that yesterday or was that a few days ago? I reported, uh, I've reported some license plate numbers to TBI. Uh, I let them know a couple weeks ago that some of my volunteers were being followed. Mm. That's just so, that's just crazy to me. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty weird. That's very, very weird. We might circle back to that question here in a second, or at least that topic here in a second. But I do have some questions. I know that there has been um, some updates. You and Katie Proudfoot, at least Katie Proudfoot, were in the same room with TBI, and they gave you some updates. Can you tell me anything that came of that conversation with TBI? The video with the two flashlights on there, they showed me the whole video. And then they showed me the video in the daylight, too. Mm. And it wasn't flashlights. It was literally the video that was showed to the public was like a small little portion of the screen, yeah. not the whole actual screen. And it was a trash truck. It came through. It's why it was slow at the beginning because it was picking up trash. And then after they picked up trash, when it came back, they were dipping out of the neighborhood. Interesting. Because, okay, so we've seen that video. We've all seen the at least what Nick Barris put out here. Now, and you're trying to explain it a little bit. I, I wish, I, I hope you can explain a little bit more. When you went and saw it with TBI, the nighttime stuff, the flashlight, the stuff that looked like fireflies for crying out loud, and the black abyss. 
was that the full picture or or is that was that a cropped video that was like a three, that was like a three by five of a full tv screen really yes so okay so it's a it was a cropped segment right. or a, a cropped section of a, a very big picture i've so seen some people actually sit there and talk about well the trash don't run at a quarter after three in the morning. You're right. It runs between five and five thirty in the morning. Right. But the whole time that I watched this, the the time on the DVR that they had stayed three eleven for like fifteen minutes. Okay. So it so was broken. Equipment. So it was broken. Okay. So it stayed at three eleven for for the whole time. So three o'clock was not the time that it that this these trash guys came in. These gar garbage men came in and picked up the trash. That was a little bit later on, a little bit earlier in the morning, if that makes any sense. More like five or so, right? Correct. And of course, again, this was a cropped video from a very, very big video. Yes. Okay. I honestly think somebody did it for, for clickbait. I mean. Mm, I see. Okay. So then. Okay. He wanted people to log in to follow, and right. if he's watching this now, he knows why I'm not answering his phone calls. Oh, I see. No, I get that. But okay, then tell me this: it is false okay. information and something that's going on trying to find my son. I can see. I can understand getting upset about that for sure. I definitely can. But there is actual movement in that area. If he didn't know, I could see that. But, you know, I could see a little mistake happening there. But as far as the rest of the image, right? Because it was only cropped with a bunch of, you know, with those two white dots floating around for two seconds, right? What does the rest of the picture that you saw look like? Is it just pitch black or was there movement elsewhere? It's literally, it's dark because it's at night. But you can make out the road. And so it's like whoever shared it with Nick and Nick uh, put it out, you could see the whole road. There was nothing there. There was no cars on that road. There was, there was no movement on the road except for the trash truck. That was it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. But you also saw footage from during the day as well, right? You just said that. It was nighttime and day. Yeah, because that what they wanted to do is they showed me the video, the footage for the night, and then mm -hmm. they turned it around and they took from the same camera video footage from the day and showed me where the markings and everything were so that I had no doubt in my mind. Gotcha. Because some of those lights actually stay stationary. Mm -hmm. and they're on throughout the night and throughout the day. And they literally show me where it was. And I've been in the neighborhood. I even knew what house it was. As soon as I saw it, I, I, I recognized the house. So I knew the angle. Because the angle's coming from at the end of the street. It's not... Pointing at like a common section is just literally at the end of the street so that the owner can watch all their vehicles. Gotcha. Wow. Okay. And uh, for everyone who's watching the show, just tuning in just right now, this is the biological father of Sebastian Rogers. Just so you guys know, he has boots on the ground in Hendersonville doing everything he can to find his son. He has been missing for the past month now. It's, I'm sure, extremely daunting. As you can tell, I, Seth, I mean, I can't wait for you to have an actual good night's rest. I know that won't happen until you find Sebastian, but still, I know that you're doing a lot of work to um, try today, to bring your son home. I feel better today. I've, I've been to church three times. I've done mass. I'll be at church again tomorrow for Holy Saturday, and then it's Easter Sunday. And I just praying for a miracle. So, same here. Same here. Well, you go to mass for that, then, buddy. <laughs> I will be. I will be for sure. <laughs> I will be sure for sure. 
But one thing I do want to point out really quick to everybody real quick right now is that there is a GoFundMe right now. This is to help Seth stay boots on the ground out in that area. Okay, before we continue on in our conversation, please, guys, I'm going to make sure that it is posted in the uh, posted at the top of the chat in the family chat so that you guys can go. Please, their goal is to just hit $18,000. They're almost there, okay? A dollar, it doesn't matter. A penny, it doesn't matter. Whatever you can contribute is still a step in the right direction. So please go over to his GoFundMe, show some love, show some, show some support. There's some other, one, other things that I will be sharing with you guys as well if you want to contribute in other ways. We will be talking about that a little bit later on in the conversation, okay? But go to that GoFundMe if it moves you so, all right? This man is boots on the ground as we speak. So go over there and help if you can, okay? And we will be talking about volunteers here in just a little bit as well, okay? Just to give you guys all a heads up if you want to get out there and help search for Sebastian. Now, you went there, you checked out this, this video, the full scope of this video. What we saw as regular people, okay, the people that are very passionate and really caring and that care about finding Sebastian. The footage that we saw was a cropped video up in the top right-hand corner of this very big, uh, you know, a much bigger picture. Yes, so sir. You saw day and night. What else was being said or talked about or shown to you with TBI? I had requested video proof that my son was alive after I spoke to him on Thursday. What footage was that? They showed me footage of him leaving Texas Roadhouse and getting into his mama's vehicle with Texas, her. Texas Roadhouse. So he was getting in a vehicle with Katie Proudfoot from eating at Texas Roadhouse, correct? Yes. Was Chris Proudfoot there no. in the footage? No. Chris was in Memphis. Okay, so Chris was definitely in Memphis. Okay. But when you saw them leaving, were they with anybody? Were they alone, just the two of them, going into this car? Yeah. Okay. Quick, quick question. Did you see any footage from inside no. Texas Roadhouse? No. Okay. They just, told, I, I wanted proof of life on Sunday to make myself feel better. You guys want to know why I was smiling? That's because oh. yesterday I, I, I got to see my son. I mean, it's not current. It's not up to date, mm -hmm. but it gives me a little bit better of a feeling that I got to see him. No doubt. No doubt. And uh, I can only imagine. So when you saw him walking out of Texas Roadhouse with Katie Proudfoot, his biological mother, was he wearing the same clothes that they're describing that he was no. last seen in? Okay. Okay. After seeing that footage, I know it made you happy to see him. Of course, you miss your son. I don't know. Was there any interaction, any exchange with Katie between you and Katie after seeing this footage? No. When was the last time you spoke with Katie before TBI? Before the TBI meeting? It's been a couple weeks. It's been a couple weeks. Wow. Have you seen them, Chris and Katie Proudfoot, boots on the ground, searching along with you at all, e even at the beginning when you came into town, when you first came into town? Uh, Chris went with me for one night to go check out some leads that were coming off of Facebook, but they were three days old, I think. And after that, no. Okay. They say that they're doing it. They say they're out there handing out flyers, putting out signs, getting billboards up, things of that sort. But they're not where I'm at. 
Gotcha. Which, I mean, it, it kind of, you know, if you got more than one person doing it, it would be, in the grand scheme of things, it would make sense to split up to conquer the area. Right. It would, wouldn't it? It would. So let me ask you. Let's talk about the search that you had with Chris. What was that like? How was the interaction? How was the search with him? Was it awkward? No. It wasn't. It was not awkward. Uh, I was the passenger side. I was the passenger in the truck. And he was driving around. He's familiar with the area a lot more than I am. So he knew from the Facebook tip where to go. And so I just jumped in the truck with him. Okay. Gotcha. And then that's it. You guys did a search and no strange, no odd interaction. He didn't say anything that would have made, I don't know, spark any kind of red flags or anything of that sort. No. Okay. I see. So my question is too, just going back to the TBI meeting, the most recent one you had, aside from those videos, was there any new leads or anything that they told you? They're not going to tell me. It's an active investigation. They're not going to tell me. Are you satisfied with their investigation thus far? That's I. Asking me that question is like asking me if I like the hamburger that I see you cooking. I haven't seen the finished result yet. Finished result is me getting my son back. The sooner we do that, the sooner I'll tell you how happy I am. Gotcha. I see. If that makes sense. No, that makes total sense. That does. I like hmm. food. <laughs> so do I. So do I. I'm a hell of a cook. We gotta we gotta sit down to throw down sometime, my brother. When we when oh, we finally oh. get to meet. What kind of, what's your what's your favorite cuisine? Uh well, I'm okay. I make a mean steak. My steak is fire, okay? Bar none. Now, what do you mean by a mean steak? Do you slice it open in the middle and shove it full of jalapenos and cheese? No, and I don't do. No, I don't do any of that crazy stuff. No, just you just cook throw it. it on slab and you know sear it on both sides and serve it bloody. Serve it right, all day long. Serve it right, okay. All right, and a a, a mean fennel puree with some uh, asparagus. Now you're getting me hungry, man. Now you get well, me hungry, bro. <laughs> you should have gone to church. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I will be in the church soon. Trust and believe. Trust and believe. Um, so when it comes back to the conversation, because now we start talking about food, I'm going to get hungry. But after this, after your conversation, you did have you seen Chris? When you saw when you saw Katie Proudfoot, did you see Chris? No. Okay, so he wasn't there at all. He wasn't there physically. No. Gotcha. Okay. Are you uh, looking into any private investigators or lawyers at all? Investigators? I've got four of them. Oh, you got four. Right on. I'm not playing. Gotcha. I see. See where I get a lot of my leads from. Gotcha. Seeing any uh, footage or anything of that sort, has that moved you to make any movements as of late? None? Nope. I've gotten some tips. Uh, United Cajun Navy's, uh, Navy was here. They left. They were, they, they were getting the death threats. Yes. I do want to talk to you about that as well. Um, so I want to bring that up real quick because i'm a little confused uh to be honest but they are i'm just pulling this up really really quick cajun navy is calling off 
uh, searching for Sebastian. What's up with that, Seth? Why is that happening? Why did that happen? What's up with that? I mean, they're helping search to find my son, and people are threatening them, trying to run them over with a truck, throwing stuff at them. I mean, these people are trying to help me find my son. And this is the kind of welcome they got to Tennessee. The, the state of volunteers. And these people came to volunteer to help. Not everybody's perfect. That's why I told everybody you need to drop your egos and understand that Sebastian is the focus of this. The end goal is to find Sebastian alive and well. Mm -hmm. And some people decided to let their egos get in the way. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so because of that, and of course they were getting threats, allegedly, that's why they're gone. Are they coming back at all? Did they just take a day off? What? What's the story here? They told me, they called me this morning, and they said that because of the death threats that they have to pull back because not only are they getting threats, but their family members are getting threats. Oh, come and on. I don't want... I yeah. cannot viable for somebody. I'm trying to find my son. No doubt. And the last thing I want is somebody. I, I, I can't. I cannot on my conscience have somebody having their family getting threatened because they're trying to help me find my son. That I mean, I've already told my volunteers. You know, be careful. Stay in groups. You know, at five o'clock. I know we still got a couple hours of daylight left, but I want my volunteers to be safe too. So I've told them at five o'clock, I need you all to go ahead and, and call it quits for the night. You may not want to, you know, but your life is precious as well. My son's life is precious, but I'm not willing to risk other people's lives for my son's life. Gotcha. I my I ain't worried. Re repeat that again. I'm sorry. Say that last thing. Said mine on the other hand. I'm not worried. I'll be your huckleberry. I heard that. I heard that. And yeah, I, I, I it is frustrating and, and tragic that they, uh, I, that's frustrating and tragic that they left. Um, I, I gotta be honest. Uh, and as a, you know, as a father as well, I, I, I can only imagine how that feels. But as far as volunteers go, has that changed in the volume and the, the reception and the uh, attendance of volunteers down there? A little bit. I mean, people are, people are conscious of their own well-being. I can't expect people to, you know, be threatened or anything else to help me find my son. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry that's happening to you, brother. But I want to bring this up really quick. You know it, it, this is what it tells me. Shoot. People don't want me to find my son. Well, they can rot in hell, and people in hell also want ice water. And I have iced tea. I got you. I got you. But for those of y'all who want to stay in heaven... <laughs> and want to help volunteer, can you let them know where they can go and volunteer? They need as many boots on the ground, okay, out there, guys. So can you tell them where they can go uh, and when you guys are starting your search tomorrow morning and all that? Right now, you just need to kind of pay attention to the Facebook pages. Um, I will be at church tomorrow. I mean, I'm taking this weekend to get my leads in place so that i have viable leads on where i can send people uh there's a couple groups that are out there that feel the same way that i do about my son you can't scare them they're meeting they've got things on facebook gotcha so where they're showing up they showed up today i think it was like 35 or 40 of them and they went and handed out flyers and searched a couple areas. I know all that sort of stuff. At the same point in time, I've had 
during this interview, I've already ignored eight telephone calls from people who are calling in oh, to bet. find out what the game plan is and to tell me information. Well, I won't keep you on very long. I, I know that you got a lot going on. Uh, I got a, a couple, well, a few more questions for you, but I do want to bring up uh, all these things uh, so that people know where to go. So is it still 90 volunteer drive, Henderson? They are, they are not there anymore. Okay. So where do they go now? We do not have a location currently for everybody to meet up. Uh, when I choose a location, it will go out the night before. That way I can get there and scope the area, make sure that it's a safe gathering spot for people. Okay. So how are you going to let us know, or will you let me know at least so we can put it up online, let people know? Go ahead. Let you know. I have your number. I have a couple other YouTubers' number, and I've got people with Facebook. Right. And I also, just to clarify, guys, the threats that – uh, that the Cajun Navy were receiving were not from content creators. It was actually just people living in the area or outside the area that just wanted to muck things up. Okay. So it's not yeah. any content creator that's that threw out any threats just to correct the conversation in the family chat, just so you know. Okay. Now, um Go ahead. Me personally, I've been balancing media and content creators for over 30 days now since I started this. And I love y'all. I mean, I understand some of y'all want clicks and y'all want followers and things like that. And that does not bother me. Everybody's got to have a job so they can make money. At the same point in time, I know that the more clicks and people that you have, following you the more people will hear me that means more people out there i told you i want the world to help me find my son no doubt that's absolutely right the more engagement the more likes etc the more this story and this conversation gets out there and more awareness goes out there for sebastian and that's what we're here for real talk that's what we're here for so let's get back into it footsteps or footprints i'm sorry that were found near this retention, this water retention pond. Can we yeah, talk a little bit pond. about that? Go ahead. I'm sorry. What were you saying? I said they searched that pond. They searched that pond either day one or day two. It's only like four feet deep. And, oh, there went the light. And they we searched it. I asked them about it because I, I listened to the phone call from the dispatcher to the officers. And I brought that to their attention. And they said that they searched that pond. Okay. And they found, obviously, or I'm assuming they found nothing, because if they did find something, we'd all know about it by now, correct? Yes. That was 30 days ago. Gotcha. I'm going to go back into the conversation um, about things around the house and whatnot. Now, the ca the cars, okay? There's something that's just really been burning away at me, and I'm just curious about, have they looked at the... I understand that they've gone through Katie's car. They've uh, combed through that like crazy. But have they looked at the navigation of her they car? Information. They won't divul divulge that information? Is that what you just said? Yeah, I'm not part of the investigation. Questions like that, that would be things that would be part of the investigation. and. Yeah, they're not going to tell me that stuff. So gotcha. I don't even bother asking about it. Gotcha. Yeah. I see. I see. Um, okay. Now, I know that you, a long time ago, because I know you just did a recent interview, and this is the one thing that I got a little confused about, and I understand, you you know, could be lack of sleep, um, could be just answering the same doggone questions 15,000 times over. And it just, you know, but I remember in the interview that you had in the past, you said something about the dogs catching a scent going into a construction site and it just stopping in that construction site. But just recently, I think just yesterday or the day before, you did an interview um, with local news and you said that the dogs did not catch any scent. 
is the, that's what they're telling me now. So the scent that the dogs picked picked up near this construction site was not that of Sebastian Rogers. That's what they told me. That's they very said interesting. Thing that I received when I asked questions previously was false information. Interesting. Interesting. Um, it's very interesting. You know, I, I I guess I keep wondering about those things because it just, I know it was said before and then and things have changed. You know, like things that we've heard from the Proudfoots, they have changed over time. Now, I get it that during trauma, during nerves, being interrogated, sometimes information slips through the cracks, right? Sometimes you forget things, so on and so forth. But there's been things that have been added in later on in their conversations and in their interviews. Like, you saw the Nancy Grace interview, did you not? No, I kind of stopped watching the interviews after a particular one where I found out a lot of stuff, that, you know, about CPS and stuff. Yes. I kind of, really, you know, I guess I probably should turn around and watch more of them. But that kind of just kind of hurt me. So. So you found out about CPS from watching the conversation that they had with another podcaster. That's the first and only time you heard about Chris putting his hands on your son, Sebastian, that would garner him a visit by CPS. Am I correct? Yes. So you never heard anything from any any officials of any sort about this, even Katie Proudfoot as well. You never heard anything from her too. No. All right, I'm going to ask you a hard question. Has Sebastian ever spoken to you about the dynamics inside the Proudfoot's home? Nope. I really wish he had. Because here in Tennessee, everybody's a mandated reporter. And if I had known some of the stuff that was going on, it would have been a phone call. I'd have called Clarksville PD, Montgomery County Sheriff's. I bet. I would too. My son would probably still be here right now. So, question, because he says he only used the belt once and CPS was called. Do you believe it only happened once? It doesn't really matter what I believe. I know that it, he, he admitted that it happened. Gotcha. It's interesting because he, we dissected it uh, this morning. And he said something completely different on Nancy Grace and said it, that wasn't the case. The inconsistencies are not good and very frustrating, uh, just as a fellow parent here as well. And I keep wondering if there was ever any conversation or any hint at Sebastian having any issues or any problems with Chris or anybody at, at that home. Please continue. Well, there was a couple times my son would get frustrated on days that I was going that I that I was taking him back to his mom's. Mm -hmm. And you know, I don't want to go back. I, I hate going there. Well, he's a kid. I understand. I don't like to leave my house either. But when I asked him about it, he wouldn't tell me. And if if he had, then I could have done something. But he didn't. So now I'm looking for it. I see. So if I'm correct, you, you, you've asked him directly? Yeah. And he said nothing to you? He said nothing to me. 
I don't know if he was. I don't know if he was trying to protect me from what was going on there. I don't know what his. I don't know what his reasoning was for it. Yeah. And I want him. I. My job is to protect him. And it kind of makes me. It makes me feel like I failed. Because he wasn't able to tell me so I can do something about it. Seth, I'm 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 sorry this is how you found out. Real talk. Me too. I'm really sorry this is how you found out. Uh it, it does break my heart that all this has gone down the way it's gone down. Um, I really wish there was more clarity with these timelines, with the math, because the math is just, uh, not math. It's just not mathing. It's just not mathing to me. So I'm, I'm, I'll ask you, cause you did ask Sebastian when he would, it was time to go home or time to go back to the prophet's home. He would get upset, right? He would get. That was the he, second. That was not the last time that I took him, but the time before. And, did you? And I asked him. Did he? Just, did he I, don't, I don't get it. I don't understand why he didn't tell me. Has he told anyone in your family? Has he told anyone else about this at all? Don't know. I do not know. I got gotcha. you. Because but I, I gotta, I, find him. I gotta find him so I can make up for it. Of course, of course. I gotta find Wait. him so I can tell him that I'm that he's got to talk to me. He's got to talk to me so I know what I can do. I understand that. And I hope you do have that opportunity to have that conversation I'm with your praying. son. Praying every day. Me too. We all are. You need all to go to church, though. <laughs> I do. I do. I most definitely do. At least but make I, sure you go on Sunday. I mean, it's Easter Sunday. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. I'll be there I on need Sunday. A, I need Whole to go, okay? Yes. I mean, everybody needs to go, okay? Maybe, Whatever you pray to. Maybe it's just you need to go into church. It's just that one prayer that that gets him back to me. I'm with it. I have no problem doing that. And I'm sure everybody else in the family chat, who, and of course, if you agree, if you're down with it, fam, put in that green heart emoji in the chat right now for Sebastian, okay? Show as much love as you can. He needs it. Because I understand that there could be a possibility of him running away because he's trying to get away, possibly, okay? Possibly get away from the household in which he is in. If he's not happy at the proud foot's home, there's a possibility of him trying to, used to what I'm saying, run away or get to you. Have you thought about that possibly? I have. I've, I've been to, me and his godfather have been out to the homeless encampments trying to get a hold of people, turned around and I contacted, uh, I had somebody contact Montgomery County for me, and then I passed that information on to Sumner County to pull video cameras from the Parks and Recreation, so that hopefully we can pull. They can find some information along those lines. I've made. I mean, there's flyers everywhere in Clarksville, Oak Grove, Guthrie. You know, any place that I have driven through that would be close. So that way, and, and I've talked to the police departments up here. They know. I see. 
I'm going to make sure everybody knows my son. Of course. I think a lot and, of people know your, your son, but and, yeah. And when I have him back, we're going to have to disappear for a while. Oh, yeah. I get it. I get it. I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping for nothing but a positive outcome with everything here. Just gotta just gotta find it. Yeah. I know. I need everybody. Heads up, eyes open. Have you reached out to any other uh organizations or have any other organizations like search and rescue type of organizations reached out to you at all because i it's still kind of mind-blowing that cajun navy is gone now and it's kind of now kind of gone back down to you running it solo has anybody else any other organization organizations reached out to you at all we've reached out we're waiting on word back we're not the only people in the world that need help that's true so That's very I'm, true. We're just waiting our turn in 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 the lottery system, I guess, for somebody to reach back out to us. Equisur Equisearch at all? They were here uh, two weeks ago. Could they circle back and come back and and do another round for a couple, like a week or so? We're hoping. We've reached out. Okay. Well, for those of y'all who are watching right now, that have any connections to any other search rescue type of organizations can you please reach out to them it takes two seconds to send out that message to that friend to that person who's the higher up whatever it may be okay uh, we really need to get this young boy back home as quickly as possible so please if you can reach out because we got a lot of people watching right now a, a gang of people watching right now if you guys can please Use your connections for the greater good. That'd be greatly appreciated. I got some something? information for you. Let's go. All right. Uh, the rudder at Anchor High Marina has agreed to allow us to use their parking lot as a command center until searches are over and Sebastian is found. The address is 126 River Road, Hendersonville, Tennessee. Three seven zero seven five. One twenty six River Road, Henderson, Hendersonville, Tennessee. Yep. Three seven zero seven five. Correct. That is correct. Okay, I'm just going to repeat it again for everybody. Okay, and what is that facility? What is that facility called? Just so everybody, you know, if it has something written on the side of it or something like that. It's called the rudder the rudder okay everybody of course you heard seth that's breaking news right now just so you guys know please if you're in the area if you're 45 minutes away if you are 30 minutes away if you're an hour away it doesn't matter it takes two seconds to hop in a car and drive your butt down and help no out searches. there will be no searches on sunday due to easter okay I need. I, I want everybody to spend time with your family. You don't ever know when you're not going to have them again. So enjoy, enjoy the time that you have with them. They're saying that I that they'll have searches tomorrow from nine thirty a.m. to six p.m. and that all other times it will be nine thirty to six Monday. Starting on Monday. Okay. Okay. So you guys know the rudder. Okay. It's, the place is called the rudder. It's 126 River Road, Hendersonville. It's a if you're hungry, feel free to get something to eat. It's a restaurant as well. So it's a restaurant called the rudder. The address, again, just for everybody who's watching, everybody, even those in the nosebleed seats, okay? We need your help, too. The address for the Rudder Restaurant is 126 River Road, Hendersonville, Tennessee. The zip code is 37075. Again, 126 River Road, Hendersonville, Tennessee. Zip code is 37075. They start tomorrow. At 9.30 a.m. till 6 p.m., they're taking Sunday off because it is 
the holy day. It is Sunday or Easter stun Sunday. I'm sorry, but they will reconvene back on Monday at that same spot, the Rudder Restaurant, at 9:30 a.m. And hopefully that will be the headquarters or the meet and meet meeting spot, the rendezvous spot from this point on. Okay, just so you guys know. All right. Again, please go and check those things out. If you can get down there, it takes 20 minutes. Get out there and just do 20 minutes of a search. That's 20 minutes that we can get closer to finding Sebastian Rogers. Okay. Now, the other thing, though, too, I do want to bring up as well. Uh, Of course, there is a reward for any information on Sebastian's whereabouts. Can you explain a little bit more about um, how to add to the reward if you're in if they want to help add to the reward there is there's an attorney which i gave you that information i don't know if you can post it or not yes I'll, there, I'll pull it up there is an attorney in nashville this reward was put up by the businesses in hendersonville and if anybody wants to donate to the reward the last time i checked it was at thirty five hundred dollars you would take in a check and to the attorney The attorney will give you a receipt for it. It goes into an escrow. And that's right, right there. James Brian Lewis. And then he'll give you a receipt. It'll go into an escrow account. If information leads to the whereabouts of Sebastian Rogers and the rescue of him, either or, let's go with rescue, um, then... They'll turn around, and that's the reward that they'll get. It's at thirty five hundred. So, if you guys can contribute, if you're interested in contributing, and you want to, you don't want to do the GoFundMe, but you want to contribute in another way, you can do the uh, reward. Okay, all the information is right here on the screen as we speak. So please go over there, check it out. If you can donate, that will be greatly, greatly appreciated. You know, one, one thing, though, I, I'm curious about uh, is, you know, when we talk about your GoFundMe, and I, I will be throwing these back up here, guys, again, before the show is over and before this conversation is over and the GoFundMe as well. That will be put back up here in a second. But I'm curious, the GoFundMe, speaking of that, why are the – I heard things that Proudfoots were upset with you about doing this – GoFundMe, why? What's going on with that? Is there anything you can, you know, tell us about that? Why is there tension about a GoFundMe? Chris, Katie spoke with me, and we agreed not to do a GoFundMe for finding Sebastian Rogers. And my sister asked if she could start a GoFundMe just for me to help pay my bills while I'm looking for Sebastian. And I told her that's fine. Just don't attach Sebastian to it at all. And she said, okay. And she didn't do that. And Chris got upset. And threatened to get an attorney. Okay. And personally, I'd like to thank everybody that donates to that because... That is paying my bills, and I did take a leave of absence, and I haven't been back to work since the 26th. And I I will say I am very um, surprised that your – sorry, I'm just putting this in here, the GoFundMe, just so it's here for everybody to see, okay? But I am very surprised that you were able to take a leave of absence – without any issues at all whatsoever. Yet we heard, I don't know if they're still on their vacay, but they jumped into an RV and kick rocks. What, what are your thoughts on that? Because apparently it was because he didn't need to go back down there for work. What are your thoughts on that? I'm just curious. I don't have any thoughts on that, man. This ain't about them. This is about Sebastian. They're adults. They're going to do whatever they're going to do. My son, on the other hand, is not an adult. And it's on the adult to find him. And that's what I'm doing. You gotcha. 
Now, I know a lot of people have asked a lot of these kind of questions about, about Sebastian. Um, but I do have to ask anyway, is there anything that would, I mean, is, is there anything in particular that warms him up quickly, you know, gets him very excited about things or ma makes, makes him become what, you know, something that would connect someone to him quickly? Is it music? Is it video games? Is it comic books? Is it movies? Is there anything in particular that if someone was to see him from afar, is there anything that they could use or do to be able to bring him closer so we can call 911 to get him back to you? Just call his name. Just call his name. Call his name. And if he turns around and he sandy blonde hair he may or may not still have his glasses he had them from my understanding because that's missed they're missing out of the out of his mama's house but if he if he responds to his name mm -hmm. and around and you see that smile right there or even if you don't you just see him he he may or may not be smiling right now i i don't know what kind of state he might be in just call 911. Call 911 immediately. He's going to need help. He's going to need help. A few more questions. I, I, I know these are tough. And I know you've answered these a couple times, but I, I just have to, I do have to ask. Now, has he ever had any type of erratic be behavior? Has he ever had any moments of rebellion at all? Did you really just ask if a teenage boy had a moment of rebellion? <laughs> yeah, I know that was a dumb question, but I got to ask it anyway. Would he retaliate in a way that would be like something like him disappearing, hiding away for a little while, so on and so forth? That's what I mean. No, uh, he's not done that. I mean. The boy likes to try to sometimes hide and scare you, but it's like, you know, it's not one of those runaway type things. He's never been in one that elopes. He's never been one that wants to be away. So, I, no. Okay. I understand. Okay. I, I, I do have an, a question, and, you know, this is between... Well, you and me and a whole bunch of other people here, but it's you know, I'm, me in the world, in the world. But I do have to ask you this because it is something that is has been thrown out there quite a bit. So I say this with all the love in my heart. Okay, just a precursor. But there has been a lot of conversation about you allegedly having some sort of insurance, life insurance on Sebastian. Can you explain I that a little bit? I've had a Gerber grow up on grow up plan on him since he was like four years old. Okay. Because I know that that's something that a lot of speculation is, is, you know, brewing around that specifically. So I'm just asking because of course, that's just something that people have been bringing up and having conversations about. Understand? Yeah. I think everybody should have insurance on their children. And with the Gerber Grow Up plan, the younger they are, I think you can put an inch. I, I used to sell insurance in California. Right. I had my license for it. And I think the youngest you could put insurance was on a 15-year-old newborn. And that is the cheapest you'll ever get. It. And with Gerber Grow Up, the price doesn't change. So when he turns 18, his policy literally will double. And yet... He won't be paying more for it than when he was four years old when I got it for him. I see. Okay. Um, you know, say he wanted to take money out against it after he's 18 or 21. Say he needed, you know, something for school, for college, whatnot. He can actually borrow against his life insurance policy. Because it's not a term. It's a whole life. So he can actually use that kind of like a savings plan. I see. 
I see. It, that makes sense to me. And here's the point. I mean, if you have a newborn child, put what was it? I think he told me if you put four thousand dollars into an IRA for your child just once, mm-hmm. by the time they're they're fifty, they all have over a million dollars in their IRA. And that's just a one time deposit. There's other things I should have done when he was younger that now I know. You know, you, you yeah. should always Preparing for your children's future, not just your own. No doubt. It's your legacy, right? He sure is. It's your legacy. You know, one day he's going to be my age or older and be like, you know, my dad did a lot of things for me. I think I want to do the same things for my kids. No doubt. I'm really praying for you, my brother. I am really praying for you. Is there anything else before we wrap up the show, this conversation? Is there anything else that uh, you want to share with everyone out here before we sign off? Thank you, everybody, for your prayers. Please keep your heads up, your eyes open. One of you all could see the person, could be the person that sees my son. It could be the one that, the reason that I get him back. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for Sebastian. I'm praying for everyone that is looking right now. My heart goes out to Sebastian. My heart goes out to you, my brother. And you know what? My heart does go out to the Proudfoots as well. Regardless of what the court of public opinion thinks or how I feel or anything of that sort, I hope that if there is information that's being withheld by uh, any parties or anyone around this particular case, I just pray that there is an Easter miracle and they find some moments to speak out and speak the truth. That's what I'm praying for. What you do in the dark will be set free of the light. Amen to that. Amen to that. Tomorrow is a holy Saturday. Today was a good Friday. It could have been better. I'm praying for that Easter miracle. Me too, brother. Thank you, Pastor. Anytime. Anytime, Seth. You know I got you. You know everybody in this chat got you. Okay? We are team green heart emoji out here throughout all of these internet streets right now. All we want is clarity. All we want is transparency and the truth. And of course, finding this young man. That's all we want, just like you, right? So we are rooting for you and we got you. What are you going to say, Seth? Said that's all I want. I just want my son back. I want my son found so I can have him back. Because right now he's lost. Me too. I do want him found. And I think we all can agree in the chat right now. So Seth, I'm going to let you go so you can continue doing what you're doing. Please, I just beg you. I know it's going to be very hard for you to do this, but it's one small request. Okay? One simple, small request. Even the good Lord rested. On Sunday. That was after seven days. After seven days, I know. But you've been running ham. You've been going ham for days, for weeks now. So all I ask, so that you can be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready to fight and 
and, and keep soldiering on for your son. All I ask is you get just a little bit of shut eye on Sunday or within the next 48 hours. You, you, you deserve it and your body deserves it. We can't have you. We can't have a sleep deprived Seth Rogers out here. We need a fully alert and ready and healthy Seth Rogers. So please bless your body with some rest this weekend. That's all I'm asking. And I'm not sitting here saying, do not feel that you take you taking a two hour nap is letting your son down. In fact, that's helping your son. It's keeping you strong. It's keeping you healthy. So please do that for me and for everyone else here, please. Thank you. I know. Just try. Drink some chamomile tea, something. Get all fancy with that ish. You feel me? I think I have some chamomile tea right here. <laughs> That's the worst things you could be drinking right now, my brother. Okay? But. It's, at least it's not alcohol. I, at least it's not that. Thank God it's not. But I'm just saying. Hydrate. Water. It's clear. Not that. Put that down. Put it, put it put it down. Put it down. Put that put that ish down. Get some proper sleep, my brother. Put it down. Don't 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 you do that. Don't you dare do that. All right. <laughs> I love you, man. I really do. Real talk. My 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 heart goes out to you. I really want everything to to change today, like right now, you know, uh in finding him. I want nothing but positivity. And I just want the truth just like you do and finding your son. So I hope we do find it, find him and find the truth or at least some leads that get us closer to finding him. I do appreciate you sharing everything you did tonight. I know it's not easy, especially when you've done 15,000 interviews in the last 48 hours, but I know this is all for the, for the good cause. But you know, I just want to keep my son's name and face out there. Well, that's why you have content creators like myself and the many other amazing content creators on this platform and on TikTok talking about Sebastian. Exactly. Exactly. And we'll continue talking and bringing his name to light until this case is solved, until he is found. But Seth, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go so you can go get some rest. I know you've been getting phone calls like crazy. I know you got a lot of things you got to do, many miles to go before you sleep. So I'm going to let you go to it because I know that's important, okay? But you stay blessed. Get some rest, my brother. Enjoy your Easter Sunday. I'm hoping for an Easter miracle. Much love yeah. to you, my brother. And we'll be talking soon, okay? We'll, I'll be in touch, okay? Thank you. No problem, brother. Stay blessed, all right? Talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Well, I do appreciate you guys all being here and being a part of the conversation. It really does mean a lot. Um, I know that uh, there were a lot of people wanting to ask questions and all that, but at the same time, I, I, I wanted to respect him as much as I can. Um, and I know that he couldn't stay for the whole, you know, for several, for a long time. But I will be going through your super chats here um, and see if I can answer anything, you know, that isn't directly towards him. I apologize. But at the same time, I wanted to be respectful of his time. And I know he's very, very busy. And I'm sure he has spread so thin right now. And I hope he gets the rest that he needs. I really do. I know he won't fully get that rest, but I hope he does. Let me get some of these things. Um, some of these, okay? So, Maude, thank you so much. But, yes, please contact him if you can, okay, about the search. That will be fantastic. That will be greatly appreciated, okay? Thank you to a uh, single mom. Welcome to the family. Thank you so, so very much. Okay? I'm going to try to see these... Family members, thank you, Busy Mama. Thank you so much, Christina. And thank you, uh, Tracy Witt. 
applause to all three of you. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, I did. I did ask that question. S Dubs. He was wearing something completely different than what he is allegedly wearing um, at uh, <clears throat> at Texas Roadhouse. Okay. I know that there's a lot. Okay. Uh, again, S Dubs. Why are they? Why were they getting threats? Uh, you know what? Honestly, I will be honest. I do not know why. <laughs> I really don't know why. I think. There was some tension. Some things were uh, exposed or at least revealed. It made people feel some type of way. And I think threats were made. That's it. And I think they just were not comfortable with that. Because uh, Grave, thank you so much for the five. Pascal, two separate content creators caused those threats to start. It's shameful and sad. Next week, I can come and help search who else will come. Grave evidence i'm wondering the same thing who else will be be able to go down there boots on the ground and show love show some support i will be i will be sharing with you guys that information here in a second i close i slowed down the chat as best as i could i slowed it down again when i saw uh this in the corner of my eye okay uh joellen thank you so much welcome to the family i appreciate your support okay uh tell seth this is not his fault uh yeah i'm 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 sure he is uh battling a lot, okay? Um definitely. Um my heart goes out to him. Real talk. Um Jessica, thank you so much for the 10. I really do appreciate it. Okay? Um but again, I am wondering I I I still have so many questions. Clearly we have a lot of unanswered questions. We have a lot of dead ends. There's no answers to what actually happened here. I'm still trying to wrap my own mind around this whole situation. It is so wild that this young boy, just this young man went and just disappeared, vanished without a trace, nowhere to be found. Um, I can only imagine what all three of them Let's be real. I can only imagine what all three of them are going through and what they're thinking in their heads right now. I'm talking about all the parents, stepfather, biological mom, biological father. I'm still wondering. I, I can only imagine what they are actually thinking and what they're going through right now as we speak in their minds. It's mind-blowing. And yes, Kathy Sin, there are so many missing pieces to this whole gigantic picture and it's frustrating. But now we have a few things that have been cleared up, at least as far as the flashlights, right? The flashlight footage. Now we know that that was a cropped image from a much bigger piece of surveillance. He also got to see surveillance footage of Katie Proudfoot and Sebastian Rogers leaving Texas Roadhouse to go into her car and drive off. He was alive and well during that time. He asked for that image. He asked for that footage, and he got that footage. He finally got that footage. But that still does not answer what happened from the time they left Texas Roadhouse and when they got to the house. Between the time they left Texas Roadhouse to the house did something happen in between those times or did everything did his disappearance happen within the house those things have yet to be answered and law enforcement are still sitting on the fence they don't know if it's foul play but they can't they can't say it's foul play but they don't know if it's foul play it's a weird situation it's a weird one and we do have the proudfoots allegedly I don't know if they're back home, and I would highly recommend if they were ever on my show, I would highly recommend them taking their butts back home because this looks very, very bad. It looks very suspicious, and that's not fun. That's not good for them, especially in their ploy of trying to show that they're innocent. But let's not forget the information that was talked about with the CPS, the belt, etc., 
conversations that were said on podcasts that changed on the Nancy Grace interview, which is a crucial interview that is national, national television, that suddenly the dialogue, the narrative changed. That's not good, guys. We played a clip from that podcast. We did. And we heard it with our own two ears. We heard it. And then we saw, we replayed that interview, that segment of that interview with Nancy Grace. And he changed the entire narrative. And he was lying. He was lying. It's not good. So again, so again, I pray and I hope that whoever is withholding that information on the whereabouts of this young man, Sebastian Rogers, steps forward and clears their conscience this weekend. That's what I'm hoping for. Real talk. This little man needs to get back home. So whoever's out there that knows anything, please speak up. Now's the right time. Before was the right time too. But now, let's get the conversation going here. Tell the truth. Whoever that person may be. Again, guys, I want to say, please go check out his GoFundMe. Help him out. He's going to be out there for God knows how long. I don't think he's ever going to give up. I don't think he's ever going to quit looking for Sebastian. And he's not working, so he needs your help. So please check out that GoFundMe link that is pinned to the top of the chat right now. He's just trying to get to $18,000. He's a little over 200 and some odd dollars left to reach that goal. If you can, if you got five, if you got a dollar, whatever it may be, contribute if you can. That'd be greatly, greatly appreciated. Again, if you want to support by coming out and volunteering, you got some time on your hands over the next couple of days. It, if, it doesn't have to be tomorrow. It could be Monday, Tuesday, whenever, okay? Please go over to The Rudder. It is a restaurant, The Rudder. It is 126 River Road, Hendersonville, ten, Tennessee. The zip code is 37075. 37075. They start tomorrow br bright and early at 9.30 a.m., and they're going to start searching, and they will stop searching at 6 p.m. tomorrow. They're going to take the day off on Sunday because it is, is Easter Sunday. If you want to show some support, if you want to show some love, if you want to help get this young man back into the arms of his father, please consider volunteering. Like I said, it just takes... 20 minutes to just walk into an, in a specific area and show some love. The other thing I do want to talk about uh, real quick before we wrap up. And, that, you know, we were talking about him not knowing about CPS being called and all that. And I think that it's obviously very devastating to hear that information. It's very devastating to hear that you didn't, or just find out that you didn't know. This is why I urge every single last one of y'all that are parents out here, keep having your conversations with your children, even when it's awkward. And I'm not sitting here saying anything about Seth or anything of that sort. This is not a dig. I'm just saying this can be a cautionary tale for all of us. All of us parents out here have those conversations. 
even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's weird, keep having those conversations. Make sure your kids know that that lane of conversation, that lane of dialogue is open. That you can have those hard conversations with them. I also will say this too. I know this sounds like a, you know, cliche phrase, but if you see something, I also urge you to say something. I think that there are a lot of kids out here that go and in, endure tragedy or very bad treatment from family members. And it's seen from the outside, from someone else, but they just turn their eye. They avert their eyes and they look the other way. And I think that if you hear something, if you see something, say something. If someone, a child, feels close enough, comfortable enough to confide in you about something that they might not be comfortable talking about to their own loved ones, to their own parents and whatnot, speak up. Just speak up. My heart breaks for this family, for this whole family. This is a, a, a tragic situation, and I'm hoping that we can get this figured out as soon as possible. <laughs> Let's get out there and find Sebastian. Let's find them. Anyway, guys, that's the show. I appreciate all y'all for being here. It means a lot. Every single last soul that's come in, it really does mean a lot. You guys are amazing. Thank you. All I ask for you guys to do is to share. If you can, share the show. Share the information. Most importantly, share the information. If there was anything that stuck out to you that you think is a red flag or a clue to something, please look into it. Do whatever it is that you need to do. But all I ask is that we keep hashtagging his name. We keep putting his name out there. We keep saying his name. We keep showing the, the support and the love. We keep side-eyeing the people that we need to side-eye. And we start and we continue to ask the right questions. So do me a favor, guys. Hit that like button down below, please, and thank you. Okay, I see a, a bunch of y'all in here. If you appreciated the conversation, hitting that like button would really mean the world to me. Please and thank you. Okay, it helps this conversation get out there into the ether and into, into that world. Okay, that really mean a lot. That would mean the world to me. Okay, of course. Don't forget to hit the reaction button, hit that subscribe button, hit that follow button on all my platforms. Follow me on TikTok. I will be, just so you guys know, I will be going live on TikTok after I go and sign off right now. So I will be on TikTok live to chop it up with you guys for a short minute and do a little after show conversation with y'all. So please go over to my TikTok the Pascal Show, one word. I'll be over there in just about five minutes. All right? Going live. We're going live, baby. But please, go over, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow on Facebook, X, TikTok, Instagram. Hit that join button down below. Become a member of the family if you're watching on YouTube. Check out my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the Pascal Show. Check out my merch page, pascalmerch.com. That would be greatly appreciated. But most importantly, if you can contribute, please go over to his GoFundMe right now. It's The link is tagged to the top, pinned to the top of the chat right now as we speak. Please go show some love. 
throwing a dollar. It doesn't matter. Just a little bit of something. A little something, something. Okay? Goes a very, very long way. I appreciate all y'all. You guys are amazing. Stay positive out there. Keep your heads on a swivel. As he said, heads up, eyes open. Especially for Sebastian and for all the other missing kids and people that are out here missing right now. If there's any updates on Sebastian, we will be talking about it. Trust and believe. Anyway, guys, it's time to get going. Have a great Friday, Friday night. Enjoy it. I appreciate you guys. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. I'll see you guys soon. Stay blessed. <laughs> Let's find Sebastian, guys. This is the Pascal Show. <laughs>